Welcome to its Storm Team 20 special report, keeping you safe in the storm. Good evening and thanks for joining us for our Storm Team weather special, keeping you safe in the storm. I'm Chief Meteorologist Cheryl Lemke, alongside meteorologist Joe Crane and Thomas Patrick. Now, severe weather season already underway, and as we head into April, this is the time of the year when violent thunderstorms and tornadoes impact much of the United States, including right here in central Illinois. Over the next half hour, the three of us will make sure you have the information needed to keep you and your family safe during severe weather. We'll also give you our storm team seasonal forecast for both the severe weather season and the flooding outlook this spring. And we'll take a look back at some of the biggest tornado outbreaks in central Illinois, including the EF3 Gifford tornado from 2013 and the Springfield tornado from 10 years ago. The Gifford and Springfield tornadoes are great examples that tornadoes can and have happened year round in Illinois. But statistically, two out of every three in Illinois happen in April, May and June. A similar trend can be found when it comes to time of day, with about 80% of all tornadoes statewide happening between 1 and 9 p.m. Though tornadoes can happen at any time, when a tornado warning is issued, you need to take cover immediately. The safest place, no matter where you are, is the lowest level of the building that you're in and the interior most room. Basements and underground locations, like a storm shelter, work even better. It's critical to put as many walls between you and the storm during a tornado so you're away from windows. Tornadoes aren't the only severe weather threat. High wind from downbursts and straight line winds typically cause more damage than tornadoes that touch down in Illinois. The National Weather Service says about 75% of all property damage is caused by straight line winds. Each year, Illinois has about 500 reports of thunderstorm related wind damage. Severe thunderstorm warnings are issued when there are threats of damaging winds or large hail. Severe thunderstorm warning is defined as having wind gusts upwards of 58 miles an hour or large hail one inch in diameter. That's about the size of a quarter. During severe thunderstorms, be sure to stay inside and away from windows and make sure your kids and pets do the same. Flash flooding in the United States causes more deaths annually than tornadoes as rapidly rising waters can be deceptively strong. You should only travel if it's an emergency and never drive through floods. Remember, turn around, don't drown. It only takes six inches of moving water to sweep a person off their feet. Two feet of running water can carry away cars. Even if the water isn't moving, you and your children should avoid flood waters because in urban areas, they're usually caused by backed up sewage and storm drains. It's also a good idea to keep important documents somewhere at home where they won't get wet. And one of the best tools for outdoor warnings are sirens, but they do have their limitations and you may not always hear them. It's an all too familiar sound in central Illinois. <laughs> sirens blaring. We hear it often enough, but do we really know what it means? It's a common misconception that emergency sirens will wake you up while you're sleeping at night if severe weather threatens. But according to Springfield Fire Department Chief Barry Helmricks, the truth of the matter is that sirens are meant to alert people outdoors of impending dangerous weather and may not necessarily even be heard indoors. You know, the sirens are really designed for, if you're outside, to warn you to, to take cover. An elaborate network of over 50 sirens are scattered throughout Springfield, each generating 70 decibels of sound and can be heard on the average of one and a half to 2.16 miles out depending on the terrain. Even before the sirens get activated, preparedness plans have already been put into place to safeguard the city of Springfield. It all starts when the potential exists for severe weather, at which point government entities like the fire and police departments and the National Weather Service will be on heightened alert. As the storm system draws closer, the Sangamon County Office of Emergency Management also dispatches trained weather spotters. If a tornado is actually sighted or if wall clouds and funnel clouds are spotted, then a message is sent to the 911 center and then the fire department, at which point the siren is sounded. Of course, from our EOC where we're at now, we have a console also at the 911 center and then all the staff duty for the fire department has that ability with their vehicles. And then some of us all also have that ability with our computers. We can remote into, into the, the system and set them off that way too. The whole warning process takes place almost instantaneously, and that's important because when severe weather hits, sometimes it comes down to mere seconds between life and death. The bottom line is that the warning sirens are only activated for very serious weather conditions, and so the sirens need to be taken seriously. But remember that it's always best to have multiple methods of getting critical life-saving weather information. 
So warning sirens are great when you're outside, but may not be as good or as helpful when you're indoors. That's where having a NOAA weather radio comes in. Now, when you're on the go, you can have weather alerts pop up on your phone. Download the WICS weather app. It's customizable to give you alerts for the area you're in. Even if you're out of town, the app comes with audible alerts warning you about severe weather, including tornadoes and winter storms. It's the free WICS weather app available on the Apple Store and through Google Play. Now, you guys know I have a son that plays a lot of baseball in the spring and summer, so we're always on the go around Central Illinois. Mm -hmm. I like the feature that you can set it to pretty much roam where you are, so immediately you can pop up and see what's going on. Yeah, it's so versatile. And it has those audible alerts, too. So even if it's in your pocket and you get that warning, it'll just tell you severe thunderstorm warning. Well, coming up, we take a look at some of the biggest severe weather events to hit Central Illinois, including the Springfield tornado 10 years ago. And did you know we put a lot of emphasis on tornado safety, and rightly so, since Illinois ranks fifth in the nation for the most tornadoes per square mile. We'll be right back. This is Storm Team 20, keeping you safe in the storm. Welcome back. Staying prepared and one step ahead of severe weather is something that you need to do year round. The easiest way to do that is with an emergency kit for your home and car. Those essentials include first aid supplies, flashlight batteries, a phone charger, water and medications. When severe weather hits, electricity and other utilities could be out for several days. So it's recommended you have enough food and water for three days for you and your family. However, you might not be inside when a tornado warning comes down. In that case, head to the nearest sturdy structure, like a house, and go from there. You should not take shelter in garages, sheds, or mobile homes. If no structure is available, you should lie flat in a ditch. Again, mobile homes are not sturdy structures, which means if you live in one, waiting out a tornado warning there isn't safe, Cheryl. That's right. And evacuate your home and move to a safer building beforehand, like a friend's house or community center. There's also an ongoing debate over whether or not to leave your car if a tornado heads towards a highway. Yeah, there are examples of either staying buckled up or jumping into the ditch, both being somewhat safe, but in this extreme case, you should use your best judgment. But whatever you do, do not take shelter under an overpass. They actually accelerate the winds, making storms more dangerous. It was 10 years ago on March 12, 2006. A powerful storm swept through the capital city, dropping one tornado on the southwest part of town and a second on the east side. Those affected tell us those memories haven't faded and they still remember it like it was yesterday. It just looked like a big bomb went off in this whole area. Everything was wiped out. Our building was totally destroyed. On a warm and exceptionally muggy Sunday evening, a powerful tornado carved a path right through Springfield leaving hundreds of houses and businesses severely damaged. It had been 49 years since the last tornado touched down in Springfield, but that changed on March 12, 2006. Despite it being 10 years later, those who experienced that night in Springfield remember exactly what happened, recalling every little detail. We had an employee, he was here working that night when it happened, and uh, when it came through, he was going to one of our rooms, or it's an explosion-proof room that we had, and uh, he got in there safely. Most of us were down in the basement of the village uh, police station, and then when the storm came, it was typical what you hear, it was real dark, and it got a roaring train sound, got real quiet, and boom, a, tr a tree had fallen in the police station. The thunderstorm, which produced the two F2 tornadoes in Springfield, was an incredibly powerful storm, not just in the city of Springfield, but over the path of several states. The tornado that came into Springfield had actually been on the ground for 60 miles before it entered the city. We were able to get a lot of lead time on the tornado warning for folks. In fact, we had issued the tornado warning uh, nearly 40 minutes before that tornado had come into the city limits. Our own Joe Crane had gotten the call to work that evening and help with the tornado coverage. Buildings started shaking. Gus Gordon, who was the chief meteorologist at the time, was at the weather wall. He stepped off the wall and started pointing down toward the anchor desk and said something to the effect of, I think a tornado is rolling by the station. Turns out the east side tornado came within a few hundred feet of the studio. But some other spots weren't so lucky, like the infamous Lauderback man who lost his head and Wabash Avenue, which was utterly impassable due to all the damage. We immediately started gathering donations and things for the people. 
even though you know the devastation was horrible to see, but to see how this community came together was truly amazing. Despite all the destruction caused by the tornado, because of the warning time people had, there were only a few dozen injuries and no fatalities. November 17th, 2013, a day that saw dozens of tornadoes tracking across the Midwest, including several here in central Illinois. That includes those in Washington and in Gifford. Doug Quick from our sister station in Champaign takes us to Champaign County. The date was Sunday, November 17th, 2013. Many across the region and in communities like Washington and here in Gifford, Illinois, were getting a jump on the Thanksgiving holiday by hosting family celebrations. Others were just finishing their Sunday dinner. It was November 17th. That's a month and a day in which one would not expect a strong series of thunderstorms and certainly not the development of potentially deadly tornadoes. By the weekend, the Storm Prediction Center began to see the weather models predict a huge increase in instability for a large area of the Midwest, including central and east central Illinois. By early in the weekend, all of the ingredients which would contribute to an outbreak of severe weather began to show up as a cluster of strong storms that tracked eastward on Saturday and strengthened across the plains into mid-Illinois. By that Sunday morning, the area of a high risk of severe storms had increased to include over 18 million people across the Midwest and the Great Lakes. A series of supercell thunderstorms moved across the plains and into mid-Illinois during the morning and into the midday on Sunday. And what was to occur that afternoon would be the deadliest and costliest tornado outbreak to ever occur in the month of November in Illinois. Virtually all of mid-Illinois was affected by these storms. Bloomington saw large hail, others saw damaging winds. The first tornadoes from this storm system developed in central, then east-central Illinois. The Peoria area saw heavy damage, but in Washington, a total of 633 homes, seven businesses, seven apartment buildings, and 2,500 vehicles were destroyed. The area hit by the tornado included 5,000 people, and only one person was killed during the storm, but two others died of injuries later. In Gifford, the time was around 1 o'clock when an incoming storm dropped a funnel cloud out of the sky, which became a tornado just west of Thomasboro, then proceeded to move across the midsection of Gifford on the edge of the downtown. Then it veered more to the north and eventually crossed US-136 about a half mile east of town. We heard the sirens go off, but the sirens have gone off in my life, you know, 50 times. And I thought I was going to take a right turn, but it came right at us and uh, got closer and closer and started picking things up and throwing them. And I saw it coming down Main Street, just all the debris and everything just flying. The Gifford tornado was classified as an EF3 with estimated peak winds at up to 140 miles an hour. The Washington tornado was an EF4 with winds up to at least 166 miles an hour. The lessons one can take from this storm are ones we've all heard before and can be summed up with one word, prepare. Watch News Channel 20 or Fox Illinois to stay informed on a regular basis so you won't be caught by surprise. It's by taking measures now and being prepared that will keep you from being a severe weather statistic. I'm Doug Quick. And when it comes to severe weather, tornadoes quickly capture the public's attention. However, flooding, especially flash flooding, can be very dangerous. 14 people lost their lives due to flooding in Illinois in 2015. That's the most flood-related deaths in nearly 50 years. Springtime in central Illinois and this creek bottom, yeah, there's some water coming out of the banks, uh, not very deep, maybe a couple of feet or so, but during the historic flooding in late 2015, the water kept rising and rising up this embankment. I'm now about halfway up. The water didn't stop at that point. It kept coming and rising and got all the way to the top of the road and ended up a couple of feet above this barricade. 
Four people, including two teenagers, lost their lives when caught up in those raging floodwaters. This particular incident was very emotionally draining for us. The parents were out there every single day we were looking for those boys that that, that drowned. We kind of build a rapport with those families and it, it becomes very personal for us. At the height of flooding in Christian County, some of the creeks were nearly 25 feet deeper than normal. The floodwaters were not only deep, but swift and cold. Despite the elements, the dive team members are well trained and prepared for whatever Mother Nature throws their way. So these are all aired up, ready to go right now. One of those divers is Taylorville firefighter Matt Phillips. He showed us what's involved to suit up for a rescue or recovery mission. Wetsuits to keep you warm and dry. Specially fitted swim masks that provide communication between the divers and the boat operator. Plus the weighted vest that holds the air tank and breathing hoses. And granted, you would also have an air bottle on this too. On the, so the air bottle's already on air the gear at the time. Air bottle's already on this too, and you'll have all the wow. hoses. Wow. All your hoses will be on the back, and then you'll have your mask on and your dry suit, and everything's already on. So just walking is an incredible burden. Yeah, I'm exhausted just putting this on. Altogether, the diver is weighted down with about 50 pounds of equipment while wearing a tight wetsuit that restricts some movement. An exhausting proposition, but one not taken lightly by this team of dedicated first responders. People take this job very personal and they have a lot of pride in their job, but it's also very taxing, not only physically, but emotionally. We've said it before, we'll say it again. Turn around, don't drown. It's a decision that could save your life. Coming up next, we break down the terminology we use during severe weather coverage so you know when to take action. Did you know high wind from downburst and straight line winds cause more damage than nearly 75% of the tornadoes in Illinois? We're back in a moment. This is Storm Team 20, keeping you safe in the storm. And welcome back. During severe weather season, we're always taking in a lot of information, and what we do is to take complicated terminology and break it down for you. Of course, one of the most frequently asked questions we get this time of the year is, what's the difference between a watch and a warning? Well, let's start with watches. A severe thunderstorm watch means atmospheric conditions are favorable for severe weather development. The same goes for tornado watches. Watches go into effect hours before severe weather even hits and usually includes parts of several states. As for severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings, those are issued within when the severe weather is intimate. Warnings last 30 to 60 minutes and only include very specific areas, never more than a few counties. Warnings usually come after watches. However, some severe thunderstorms can happen when conditions aren't ideal and a watch hasn't been issued. Another tool we use and share are severe weather outlooks. Those are issued by part of the National Weather Service and warn us about possible severe weather days in advance. Outlooks are based on a five point scale with one being the most limited, but five being the most extreme. These outlooks can be used for individual severe weather events too, like high winds, high large hail and tornadoes. We take our severe weather coverage very seriously here, and sometimes that means interrupting programming for information that could save lives. When watches and warnings are issued, a map and crawl of the information is displayed for however long the weather event lasts. With severe thunderstorm warnings, there's a good chance we'll cut into programming for a minute or two to keep you up to date. Tornadoes are by far the most dangerous storms, and that's why it's our policy to cover tornado warnings from beginning to end on air to make sure everyone in the storm's path is informed of the danger. Now, one advantage we have is two station transmitters, one here in Springfield and one in Champaign. That splits our viewing area into two parts. That way, we're not interrupting programming in Springfield for a tornado in Champaign and vice versa. Still ahead, we detail the outlook for the 2016 severe weather season with our severe weather and flooding forecast. And did you know, based on severe weather reports over the past 10 years, June 20th is the date most likely to see severe weather in central Illinois. Stay with us, we'll be right back. This is Storm Team 20, keeping you safe in the storm. 
Now that you know everything to stay prepared and protected from severe weather, let's take a look at what we're expecting this season. Now, what we used to predict winter weather, like El Nino, does not apply for severe weather season. So there are no strong signals to indicate that this could be an above or below average severe weather season. It'll be equal chances for both. However, because of the milder winter, it seems that the beginning of our severe weather season has come on earlier in March rather than in April as usual. Now, for the same reasons, the flooding outlook favors neither above or below average chances. The Climate Prediction Center again has equal chances for above and below average precipitation here in central Illinois. As a point of reference, the usual rainfall we get over the next three months in Springfield is just more than 12 inches. Boy, I wish we could give a more definitive yeah. answer than just kind of, well, we're going to flip a coin Nothing's this season really and what concrete. happens. Yeah. It's just so day by day, but again, things have been so mild through uh, the winter months and now into March. We did already have one severe weather event in March, so it looks like we're just a tick earlier this year. But even having a really beefed up early part of the spring season doesn't mean that that necessarily will carry over mm -hmm. for the rest of the spring season. So Absolutely. the end result is keep it here. We'll keep you safe in a storm. That's right. On behalf of meteorologist Joe Crane and Thomas Patrick, I'm Chief Meteorologist Cheryl Lemke. Also on behalf of Fox's Champagne, Del Quick, have a great evening and stay safe. Thank you for tuning in to News Channel 20's special report, Storm Team 20, keeping you safe in the storm.